So for this video, we're going to write the given equation in the form x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And we're going to identify the center and the radius. So this formula right over here, so this is a way to write an equation in standard form of a circle. Now we like our circle to be in this form here because as long as our equation of the circle is in this form, we know exactly what the center of the circle is and we also know what the radius is. So it, this is the preferred form for a circle. Um, but over here we're given the equation 2x squared plus 2y squared plus 16x minus 20y plus 50 is equal to zero. And we need to figure out how do we take this and convert it to something that looks more in this style over here. Now the way that we're actually going to do this is by using the process of completing the square. Now, taking a look at this example that we have here, there's a couple of things that we need to pay attention to. When completing the square, if you're taking a look at this form, I, we actually have two different uh, completing the square procedures that we're going to have to do. One for the x value, one for the y value, right? Because we have x minus h squared, so we're going to have to complete the square root of factor that, and then we're going to have to use our y terms and also complete the square with that to get this y minus k squared. So the first step in doing this is to do a little bit of rearranging with your equation. What you want to do is you want to group your x terms together, you want to group your y terms together, and then whatever your constant is, you want to kick it over to the other side. So my x terms are going to be 2x squared and 16x. My y terms are going to be the 2y squared and the minus 20y. And then this 50 is going to get kicked over to the other side. So this is how I'm going to rearrange it. I'm going to take 2x squared plus 16x, and I'm going to leave a space, plus 2y squared minus 20y, and I'm going to leave a space. And if I move this 50 over to the other side, I'm going to subtract it to both sides. So this is now going to equal to negative 50. And what I need to do is I'm going to complete the square for each one of these here. Now, when it comes to completing the square, one of the main things that we need to have going on with our equation when completing the square is we want our leading coefficient to be a 1. So my leading coefficient for my x terms would be this 2 right here. And my leading coefficient for my y terms is also going to be this 2 right here. And actually, if I take a look at every problem that I have in this equation, 2, 16, 2, 20, and negative 50, these are all even numbers. So if I want to get rid of the 2, the way that you get rid of the 2 is by dividing by it. But we can't just divide these two terms by 2. You have to divide the entire equation by 2. So every term is going to get divided by 2 so that we can simplify this and put it in the proper format for completing the square. So let's go ahead and divide. 2 divided by 2 cancels, leaving us with x squared. 16 over 2 gives us an 8. We're still leaving our space. Plus 2 over 2 cancels, leaving us with y squared. Minus 20 over 2 is 10. And then that's going to equal to a negative 25. Now I have ones here in front as my leading coefficients. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now we can complete the square. And again, we're going to do this twice. Once for the x's, once for the y's. When you complete the square, what you need to know is you need to be aware of this little mini formula right over here. 1 half times b squared. For the whole process of completing the square, we're trying to add this magic number, this third term onto each one of these, that's going to allow us to factor each one of these into a perfect squared binomial. Okay? The way that we find that magic number that goes in here is by this little formula. Now, B signifies your middle term in a quadratic equation. This is a basic quadratic equation here. A is the coefficient of your x squared term. B is the coefficient of your x to the first power term. This is the term that we need to be aware of here. For our x values, x to the first power is right over here. 8 is the coefficient for it. For, so for my x terms, B is going to be 8. 
So I would have 1 half times 8, then squared. Well, half of 8 is 4, and 4 squared is 16. So it's going to be this 16 is going to be the magic number that I'm able to put in right over here. I'm going to pause and not get to the factoring yet until we do our y terms. For our y terms, uh, find your y to the first, val first powered term. The coefficient for that is a 10. So I'm going to go through this equation, this little mini formula, all over again. But this time b is going to be 10. Half a 10 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. So 25 is going to be the magic number that I put in here. Now, one other thing that we need to be aware of, I plugged in a plus 16 here. I plugged in a plus 25 here. Remember, you cannot do, or what you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side of the equation. So if I'm going to add 16 here, I also have to add 16 there. If I'm going to add 25 here, I also need to add 25 here. Okay? So let's do some cleanup. At this point, I should be able to factor these into perfect squared binomials. So let's see what happens. Factoring our first one, our three terms right over here is what we're looking at. Our first term is x squared, which tells us x times x. Our last term is 16. So we're looking for what multiplies to get 16, but adds or subtracts to get 8. And that will be a 4. Everything is positive here, so everything is positive in our factors. Notice that these are the exact same factors, x plus 4 times x plus 4. We can condense this by writing that x plus 4 squared. Factoring our y terms, looking at our first term, y squared, that factors to y times y. Back here we have a 25, so we're looking for what multiplies to get 25, but adds or subtracts to get 10. That will be a 5. Okay. Um, for this particular one, not everything is positive here, so paying attention to our signs. Whatever sign your middle term has, the bigger number has to have it. These are both the same. No big number is bigger than the other one. But if you pay attention to your last term here, 25, it is positive. The only way to get a positive when multiplying is if they are both the same sign. So because I have this negative here, and I know that they have to have the same sign, that means these are going to be minus minus. Once again, we are left with the same exact factor, y minus 5 times y minus 5. So I can condense that and say y minus 5 squared. And to figure out what this is going to equal to, well, let's see. On the right-hand side, I had negative 25, but then I also have this plus 25 over here. So those are actually going to cancel out, leaving me with a 16. And by doing that, we actually have wrapped up the problem and putting it in the proper form. Notice we have our x term that's squared, our y term that's squared, and that's equal to our radius squared. They want us to identify the center and the radius. So this is the equation for our circle. The center comes from hk right over here. So the way that that works, notice with this H, the sign in front of it is negative. We have a positive. If you don't have that proper sign there, you want to take the opposite sign of what it says. This is plus 4. We actually want it to be a negative 4 is what we need. Our K comes right over here. You have a minus and a minus for each one, so you can ignore the minus sign and just pull the number. If I'm ignoring the minus sign, I have just a 5. That means my center is negative 4, 5. Essentially, in a way, just to not get confused when it comes to figuring out your signs, am I pulling the positive or the negative version of it? Because you have minuses in the formula here, um, if you have a plus, your point is always going to be negative. If there's a plus, always know that that's going to be a minus. So had this said x plus 7, I would then choose a negative 7. If it would have said x plus 10, I would have chosen negative 10. Anytime it's a plus, the point you want is going to be the negative version of it. If it's negative, just pull the number, ignoring the sign. So that's a straight 5. So the center is the point negative 4, 5. Our radius, so notice this r right over here. This r signifies our radius. But this right here signifies r squared. If 16 is r squared, right, but we just want r, 
All right, in order to just get r, we actually need to take the square root of both sides. And if we do that, we get 4. So what that means, that means that if we were to graph this real quickly, our center is negative 4, 5. Our radius is going to go out 4 in each direction, and that's what our circle is going to look like. Uh, but for this particular problem, here's our formula. Our center is negative 4, 5, and our radius is 4. Otherwise, that's it for this problem.